Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is July the 25th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how was work? Work was solid. Um, overall, it was like... Not too busy. Actually, it was it was a lighter day, that's for sure. Um, definitely was a little bit in my feelings though. Um, had my my second homie, uh, like more or less uh, cancel on me, like out of the blue. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, as I kind of noted lightly, that's like you know, uh, time happened earlier, and it's like one time that's okay. You know, my little ego can handle it. The second time, I'm like, all right, I'm butt hurt. I'm a little butt hurt. I must be a loser or something. And I also realized this too, like. I don't know, maybe a lot more people are, you know, I'm sure my listeners are hotter and way more successful in, in love and life than I am. Um, but in dating, I've, I've, you know, had my share of rain checks, cancellations. Oh, I got there and oh, it looks like uh, no one's going to show up. Awesome. You know, that sucks, but you develop a certain kind of skin for it, right? Like, so it's like, whatever, like, it, you know, clearly this isn't looking like it's going to line up. You move on. You're fine. It's, it's whatever. That's a date. That's a stranger. I've, I definitely know at least for me, like, even if it's, like, a totally reasonable thing, it just skipped my mind, it's just, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I double booked, that shit will always, like, fuck me up, because I know, like, for me, I'm like, I wouldn't do that to you, like, I, I'm just that guy, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm the perfect friend, because I've definitely fucked up, I definitely will fuck up again, but, like, when it comes down to it, it's like, if we set up a thing, I'm gonna put you in my calendar, and I'm gonna make sure that we're doing it, you know, so, that shit kind of blows, but, you know, we move. It's going to be okay. I'm not crying or anything today, so that's good. But, yeah, that definitely, like, kind of tinged the day a certain shade, and I realized that, like, I'm not shaking this. But I, I got to say, hey, you know, you guys got to give me my one day to moan and whine a little bit. You know, be a little sad, be a little sa- upset. It just happens. I'm okay with that. Anyway, um, I didn't get to the food corner yet. Um Let's see. I had a little wine. No, um, I um, made burger, hot dogs, uh, fries. It was good. It was yummy. Worked out for me. Uh, Let's see here. Um, Is there really anything else to like report on the me side? No, I feel like we blogged enough. I feel like we did that. Um, You know, a little bit more about about how I'm living, how I'm feeling. Uh, But yeah, let me go ahead and do the uh, startup. Feel free to take one with me. Not going it alone. Um, and then we'll get, in, we'll get into some news. I, I'm, I'm going to preface this episode, and I guess if you know, you know. This felt like like a true detective episode for me. I was not really prepared, but then I realized, like, you know, hey, we got to get through some of these just awkward, unfortunate issues with some of these uh, content creators, you know, or content creators and adjacent people. Um, but, yeah, I was like, let's just go ahead and, and get into them for today, and we'll just uh, hopefully have a... a, I will also say, this episode made me miss politics. Like, damn. (laughs) It's it's icky. I don't... I really don't love talking about too much of this social shit, because I always just feel out of place. I feel like I'm talking about bigger fish. I don't know. It just feels weird, and like, like, I shouldn't be the one to cover this shit. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's imposter syndrome. It just doesn't feel like the the beat I want to be on. I'll say that. But at the same time, Yes, it is, because I do want to talk about it, you know? It, you know, it's in the sphere of things that I watch, and I know other people care about this shit, too. I know. I'm, I'm going long. You know, whatever. I'm sorry. What a day we're having. Mm. Okay. Whew. All right. Sorry. Sometimes I just don't want the blogging to end. Um, from NBC News, Mr. Beast collaborator Ava Chris Tyson leaves YouTube channel after online users accuse her of grooming. <coughs> Excuse me. Ava Chris Tyson, a longtime friend and collaborator of YouTube star Jimmy Donaldson, better known as Mr. Beast, announced this week that she is leaving the channel after online commentators uh, accused her of grooming. Tyson regularly appeared on Mr. Beast's channel, which features outrages, challenges, elaborate giveaways, and high-spending comparison videos. 
Donaldson has 305 million YouTube subscribers, making his channel the most subscribed to on the platform. Uh, Tyson, who is a transgender woman, has been subjected to attacks um, against her identity in the past, and Donaldson has defended her. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's going to switch between saying Ava or Chris, um, but yeah, that, that, that's the same person. Uh, recently, Tyson was criticized for developing a relationship with a minor online, beginning when the person was 13 and Tyson was 20. The controversy began after a video in June analyzing online interactions between Tyson and the minor, who goes by Lava GS Online, gained traction on YouTube this week. More online commentators began scrutinizing public posts between Tyson and Lava GS on X and Discord, including some referring to new photos sex and hentai, meaning anime pornography, uh, which is crazy to read on NBC News, but we're here. Um, NBC News was unable to independently verify the posts, which appeared to have been taken down as of Wednesday afternoon. Um, Now, some people are saying that this is definitely like grooming. Um, Some people are just trying to say, oh, this was like inappropriate and also taken out of context, both uh, Tyson and Lava GX, who is now 20, has said, hey, these are definitely not taken, like, with the actual right narrative. Like, these are in group chats, a lot of these conversations. But it's also worth noting that there's more allegations than just Lava GS. There's also other people who have come out and said, like, oh, Tyson has had these kind of conversations with me. I didn't like the way that they were talking to me. Uh, it was just very, it made me feel uncomfortable. And so that's definitely relevant. And and also, it doesn't matter, too, that if it's it's just in a group chat, because at the end of the day, it's just flat out inappropriate. If you're an adult and this is a minor in this group chat, you shouldn't be talking in this way. It's just it's just wrong to do. And also, there's an added like element to this, too. And this is where Mr. Beast gets involved, is that some of these are like kids who are working in the discord and and they inevitably wind up working on like projects that are involved in mr beast projects so there's like overlap or tyson is paying these people for their own like their own projects the things that she wants to have done for like minecraft stuff like that what what have you gaming stuff so at the end of the day that's a whole conflict there on top of just the inappropriate nature of being a minor it's also there's work pressure like am i being coerced here you don't know like that's not a safe environment to be for anyone no matter what their age so there's really no excuse for that it's definitely understandable why uh mr beast finally came out and i I say finally i should at least shouldn't say that this shit kind of moved within a week and within a few days um you know mr beast came out with a statement uh as well as tyson we'll kind of double back to that but i kind of zoomed ahead uh donaldson said in a post on wednesday night on x that he removed tyson from the company channel and any association with mr beast after becoming aware of the allegations um let's see uh i guess yeah i want to read that over the last few days i've become aware of the series allegations of ava tyson's behavior online and i am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts he wrote during that time i have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure i have all the facts now we've talked about like independent investigations before. How I feel about them, like I get it. This is a very textbook thing to do when you are this big. You are an entity. Uh, more times than not, though, you're, you're just gonna get a situation where it's like, oh, well, we made sure to say that our client that hired us has nothing to do. They, they have nothing bad here. This is only this this person is isolated. So I, I get the feeling that's probably how it's going to shake out from that. Um, but Tyson herself, uh, I made like two comments. Um, let's see here if I got them both lined up. Uh, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. Um, but then she later goes on in another post because I think it – like it wasn't necessarily like like she was like responding to the shit at whole but people are accusing you of grooming and so she she then goes into like kind of focus on this and kind of say hey what i was doing was making inappropriate or what she says i'll just read from her now uh to lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond 
bad edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. She posted on X. In past years, I've learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can continue to work on myself. Uh, despite the post from Tyson and Lava GS, many online believe that sexual, uh, believe the sexual references in Tyson's interactions with a minor should not be passed off as edgy. Some said it was inappropriate or is inappropriate for adult uh, content creators to engage in explicit conversations with their minor fans because there is a power imbalance. And this immediately after I read that, I was like, click, you're right, um, Colleen Ballinger with the fucking ukulele. So I will definitely give Tyson credit here. And, and maybe that's not fair for me to once again just tie them together and associate them. But I do feel like this is in that ballpark where it's like, once again, like, hey, like, I, I'm coming to you in like almost like a fan capacity. And this is like an exclusive kind of bubble that we're all in. And I think things are OK here and it's not OK. And I could see how it's like, once again, th- this is oh these are just edgy jokes. These are just like, you know. I'm just, you know, cutting loose and da 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 da. Like in some situations, this wasn't even aimed at this person, and it, this is just, once again taken out of context. But th- there shouldn't be any kind of realm where this is like a conversation where kids are involved in. You know, like you're an adult and you're once again a part of running this business. Like you know, like you're at least a part of this organization. Maybe not running the business. That's the wrong word as for an assistant. But like. Yeah, it's understandable why it's like, yeah, now that this has definitely come to light, like, no, dude, this is not okay. This is not appropriate. Like, you got to go. There's also other shit, too, that I've learned. Like, I I listened to uh, Ludwig, one of my, you know, favorites, Uh, but he's also done videos with Mr. Beast or whatever. So maybe you can say it's biased, but he went through and went through, like, all the allegations. Definitely, like, some of the content, like the the hentai type stuff, like, definitely, like, weird stuff to see. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, it's the kind of things that you, like, you you can see scrolling through the internet. It's like, why would people get into this? And then you know that it's like, there are people that take this to even sicker levels. And it's like, this is the kind of shit that it's problematic for. Um, So, yeah, it's just, ugh. It's definitely an icker to start us off here. A big ew. Um, But, yeah, I I just went ahead and wanted to cover it. I realized we've covered, um, was it Dr. Disrespect? Um, and, and shit, we have covered Mr. Beast before in terms of just like, you know, is his, uh, you know, charity channels problematic, blah, 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 blah. So I don't know. I felt like this was not up my alley, but up my alley. So I wanted to go ahead and comment on it. And then while we were, I was on this, I was like, you know what I've been not talking about, but I figured, Hey, let me talk about motherfucking Cody Co. Which honestly, it's out of my wheelhouse in terms of just as a like pod news podcaster because I usually just once again don't talk about social content creators like that or whatever. But also because I'm not a big Cody Ko guy. Like in terms of the whole, was it him and like a guy named Noah? I think that's how they they blew up. They like killed like duh duh. I, I think that was a video they they did. Like I don't know. Go going, going back on the fucking lore. But I, I, I wasn't really that big of a Cody Ko fan. And um, then I will say, though, I like some of the offshoots that, like, I guess came from Tiny Meat Gang. That's, that's such a uh, TMG Studios or whatever. Um, so, like, that's cool. You know, I, I guess I respect the conglomerate in that regard. But I, I really haven't watched that much Cody Ko. Um, but that being said, apparently... This big uh, controversy, allegations have been, like, spreading, uh, running amok. So I was like, you know what? I didn't talk about it, but I, before let's pick it up before it gets cold. Um, from Time, I guess Time Magazine, yeah. Uh, breaking down, which is cr- crazy. We got a YouTuber that has made it to Time Magazine. Also on Rolling Stone Magazine. They've covered this apparently in May when this initial story broke out before. Um, if I'm not mistaken. From time, breaking down the controversy surrounding YouTuber Cody Ko. The popular commentary YouTuber Cody Ko, who has over 9 million subscribers across five channels, has been embroiled in an ongoing controversy after fellow YouTuber Tana uh, Monigal, Mangio, I probably should have ran her pronunciation and I didn't, Mia Culpa, uh, but we're going to say Monigal. Uh, alleged that uh, he had sex with her when she was 17 and he was 25. Monagao, now 26, raised uh, the allegations in May uh, during a live recording of her podcast, Cancelled, which she co-hosts with another internet personality, Brooke Schofield. During the show, Monagao 
said she slept with Ko when she was 17 in response to a question from an audience member. Uh, I believe, yeah, they have the, the clip here. Uh, if you want to go to the site and listen. Uh, oh my God, no one look at me. Cody Ko, she said on stage in a video that was recorded from the show and later posted online. I can say that. I was literally 17. When Monty Gao's comment made the rounds on social media and was covered in publications like Rolling Stone, it mostly flew under the radar. In July, however, another YouTuber, D'Angelo Wallace, brought the issue to wider attention when he posted a video titled an uncomfortable, con- uh, bleh, mush mouth, sorry, an uncomfortable conversation about Cody Ko to his drama channel. In the video, which received over 2 million views in less than a week, Wallace called on his viewers to take Monigal's claim seriously and not let it be an open secret and swept under the rug. Uh, Monigal gained popularity for her storytime videos where she would regale audiences with elaborate stories and uh, has a history of making sometimes controversial content with other creators. Um, now, she attempted to make something called Tonicon. Uh, something to rival VidCon, it fell flat. It was a whole fucking like it. Loki was giving Friar Fest just to kind of TDLR there, but she pivots, makes uh, the canceled podcast. Uh, you know, I, I guess it's more or less a hit. Um, and it's her and her co host you know, going through stories, and uh, there's that. But um, I guess this kind of hit the airwaves, you know, people knew about it and then just kind of became like a thing that people knew about. And, you know, everyone just kind of kept moving on. And people will be in comments and say things on Cody Ko's shows or or I guess his channels whenever he posts videos and stuff, but he doesn't address it. He doesn't talk about it. Um, Also, yeah, I guess for the weird legal bros, I love that they, they put this in here. According to the United States Department of Health and Human Services in Florida, where Monagal says the two had sex, the law for statutory rape says a child under 16 years of age cannot consent to sexual activity, regardless of the age of the defendant. A child who is at least 16 years of age and uh, less than 18 years of age cannot consent to sexual activity if the defendant is 24 years of age or older. So essentially, look, dude, there's no gray area where you can play with like, oh, no, it's actually like, okay, bro, like she was old enough. No, there's no, you can't do that here. Like they, you just can't. And you shouldn't do that, <laughs> guys listening out there who have those thoughts. Just no, dude, when it's wrong, it's wrong. Like it's weird to try to become a debate guy here. Like, this is not where you launch a great debate career. No, dude, it's just wrong. <laughs> if it feels like it's wrong, dude. Like, you shouldn't have to become a lawyer to defend your point. Like, it's just a weird hill to die on. I, and I don't know when people, like, hop in the threads if they're doing this to be contrarian or if they actually feel this way. But I, I just always, like, when I'm scrolling and I look at this, I'm like, why would you do this? Like, why would you cho- choose this time and this place to be like, yeah, I'm going to make this great defense on X or on Facebook about this shit? Like, no, dude, especially when you know it's wrong. Like, you just know it's morally wrong. You shouldn't need a judge to tell you. Like, dude. Um, so, yeah, like, I-, I guess there are Cody Code defenders out there. Once again, I haven't been looking for them. Um, but apparently, after D'Angelo uh, came out with this, there were more people who, like, made uh, content off of it. I mean, I, I kind of, that, that's how I word it. But, I mean, more or less their reactions to the allegations. Uh, Moist Critical, who I do watch at times, I did see that he posted. I didn't really look. I was kind of just like, oh, shit, that happened. And then um, Philip DeFranco, who I don't watch, apparently made a video. But I will say when I, my ears perked up, and this is where I actually paid attention. This is me getting anecdotal. was when I'm scrolling and I see people going in on Brittany Broski. And I'm a little bit of a Britney Broski fan, you know. I fuck with the, you know, I fuck with her a little bit. I've been seeing her around, and she's fucking with creators I like. So I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I like you. I like your style. Follow her on Instagram. And she posted a story saying, I guess I can just read it, because she, you know, she did like a bold font uh, post to it. Here we go. I'm crushed to learn about the Cody allegations. If it's proven to be true, then it's extremely upsetting as a collaborator and longtime fan. I find all of this disturbing, inappropriate, and just flat out disappointing. And she's like, bad if true. And like, essentially where I was reading it from, the person was just roasting her like, like, girl, come on. What are you saying? Like, this is like irrefutable. This person, the, the, the victim has come out and said like, hey, like, 
this happened. It's real. Like, like it's not a myth. So it's either you believe or you don't kind of type thing. And essentially she's saying, well, I'm waiting to see what Cody says. And I was wondering why she had such a lukewarm take. And then, of course, this article kind of says, well, they've done some content together. They've done some videos, you know. So it's like, oh, yeah, like that's bad for the brand to kind of come out, you know. So it's, it's hey, you know, sometimes you're going to see your heroes and they move like Jack Black. You know, it's 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 unfortunate. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, so it, definitely a lot of people, you know, coming out and having a lot of reactions. Um, even some people I, who work with, um, Cody Co under the TMG, uh, studios, they announced, uh, what is this? Um, I, I guess, yeah, podcast host, Inya Umanzor and Drew Phillips, whose show Emergency Intercom was produced under uh, Co's company TMG Studios announced on July 19th that they now plan to produce it independently. And uh, Quiet is Kept, that's kind of been an ongoing thing, and that's maybe for another episode on my thoughts on how Cody Co runs the business, but it seems like there's a, a high turnover there, but that's, you know, an issue for another episode. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else I, I wanted to pull? Um, just more people, like, kind of confirming the allegations, you know, um, but yeah, it's definitely unfortunate. Um, it's a bummer, you know, obviously I don't say that as a fan of Cody Ko. It's just unfortunate that you, you wind up hearing these things. And for Monagal, once again, I'm sure I'm, I'm fucking up her name. She's like, Hey, like I didn't initially register this as trauma. It's just something that I lived, but I think it's really fucking heartbreaking that I tell my story and people immediately turn the finger to me and start blaming me. And like, no one's pointing the finger at Cody Ko. He's essentially protected no one's mentioning no one's talking about the story it's made no waves it's sad. it's only had negative backlash against me and that's not right you know what i mean and uh wallace mentions it's like it would be nice if cody co at least came out and just said hey like here's my statement on it you know uh, say something um at least tell people to like you know get off this person's case because you know that's not right that's not you know that's not okay um and I agree with that. I think that's that's valid. I think that's real. But I'm not surprised to see someone like Cody Ko who's saying, "Hey, I'm a I'm a, I'm a married man. I'm 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 this. I'm that. I gotta protect my reputation." And they're staying silent. You know, um, obviously you hate to see it. I guess well, if you are a fan of Cody Ko or just again you're a fan of humanity, it's it's a bummer to see that happen. But um, you know, in that regard, kind of getting off of the social tip, uh, you, you weird segue as we move away. Like that's that's not new. People being people, you see the dark side sometimes, especially when people feel like they got a lot to lose. Um, but hey, you know, I that that's gonna conclude our social media section. I know that was dark. I, I'm I'm actually gonna take a little pre. I'm gonna take a little pre uh, break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little fifteen, if you will, a little fiver, and we'll, we're gonna talk sports for the rest of this episode. Okay, it's so much lighter. Okay, all right. It's actually sports and a little bit of drugs. So, all right, a little teaser. <laughs> Let's take five. I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't know how the drama, the drama frogs do it. Uh, the, the people who like make content that's like specifically that stuff. Huh. That would like give me Obama hair. Like that would age me so much. It would stress me out so much to do that kind of shit. I would never want to blow up doing my content. Granted, it's like, oh, Isaiah, do you want to blow up doing news content? No, I don't. It scares me whenever I have a big news episode and it gets, con it gets, ag but I, I'd rather that actually. I don't know why. It's, it's weird. Life is strange. Everyone picks their beat, I guess. All right. Let's 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 talk about the Olympics. The Olympics are tomorrow. That's crazy, right? I don't know if you're big on the Olympics. I will say, y'all know I'm not a sports guy. Um, that being said, even as a kid, I would get hype over the Olympics when they would, they would come on. Like, that's when I learned about Michelle Kwan. Like, yo, I was vexed. Like, amazing. Like, it's it just, uh, even, like, getting to see Sean White on a snowboard. Like, that was fucking awesome. Um, and I'm sure, you know, there's there's so many Olympic feats 
Uh, shit, I, I was alive with Michael Johnson running around. That shit was crazy. That shit was cool as hell. Um, Usain Bolt. Like, you notice these moments. Like, even, like, as I'm living my life and I don't, like, I'm not glued to the, to the channel. But, like, when the TV's on and there's Olympics on, I go, ooh, cool. Like, it, it's just cool. And, like, I was even listening to um, Last Pod and they were kind of just mentioning it and, like, talking about... Um, like, you just kind of get this, like, nationalist, I don't want to say nationalist, but nationalistic, nationalist, I guess you, you, say you, you start kind of wanting to rep for the country a little bit, you know? The stars and stripes make a little bit more sense, you know? I, I get it if you don't feel the vibe, I get that, but, like, I do think it's cool that, like, oh, LeBron James is going to hold the torch, hell fucking yeah, dog. Um, so, yeah, Olympics are upon us, they are, they are a coming. Um, so I wanted to talk about Olympics now and future a little bit. Um, so just kind of kicking it off, even though the Olympics haven't started in terms of like the ceremony where the like the torch gets all and everyone's dancing and doing stuff. Um, hopefully I see some clips. I'm not going to sit down and actually watch it. But um, there's like Olympic events already happening. So there's some crazy cool stories that I just kind of wanted to touch on, hop on, and then we can kind of just actually cruise on out of here low key. Um so, from the Associated Press, Olympic soccer gets off to violent and chaotic start as Morocco fans rush the field versus Argentina. Uh, this is um, in Saint uh, Saint France. The Olympic men's soccer tournament got off to a violent and chaotic start Wednesday with Morocco's shocking two to one win against two-time gold medalist Argentina. The result tells only part of the story after a dramatic end to the match in St. Antine, uh, which had to be suspended for nearly two hours when furious Morocco fans ran on, ran onto the pitch and threw bottles from the stands to protest a late goal by Argentina in the 16th minute of added time. The angry and bizarre scene sparked confusion on whether the game had been concluded or paused. The crowd was told to leave the stadium, but the players remained at the venue and returned to the pitch for the final three minutes of at a time um, in front of empty stands. So essentially the goal, the last minute goal, um, winds up being an onsides situation. Uh, they have like the virtual uh, like judge, like the the little video recording, essentially run it back and like, oh, this is offsides or whatever. Um, Y'all know I'm not sports. I'm getting that terminology wrong. I don't give a fuck. Um, so they they literally like people were ready to riot. A man came out with a flare gun, ready to blow someone away over this shit. And it's like. And I love that there are people out there that's like, y'all, that's just sports as usual, actually, dog. Like, sorry you don't have passion. Sorry you don't have love of the game, brah. It's like, no, dude. They literally have a term for this. Like, football hooliganism. It's crazy to be like this. It's crazy to act like this in this kind of way anywhere. Period. I don't care if it's for the love of the goddamn game. I don't care if it's for you love your country. You don't get to, like, get a club or something and start beating people up and, like, running the streets. And in this situation, running the literal field. Um, also, I love when people say pitch. I think that's really cool. Nice. Hit the pitch. Um, battle on the pitch. I don't know. It's just fun to say. It's fun to hear. Um, anyway, uh, crazy scene here. So it's like, hey, we're kicking off the Olympics with a literal bang. Um, love that. Love that for us. Now, I'm going to get her name wrong, but is it Charlotte Desjardins? Uh, yeah, the French. Tell me if I'm wrong. Oui, oui. Parlez vous français. I'm les deux fromage. Um, but this is Team GB. I don't know what that means. I tried to look it up real quick. I couldn't find it. But she was, um, set to be in the Olympics this year, and she dropped out and has now been banned from the Olympics. Um, for what? Whipping a horse more than 20 times in one minute when she was conducting a coaching lesson, a coaching session to a young rider in a private stable f uh, four years ago. The 39-year-old who won six dressage Olympic medals in London, Rio, and Tokyo uh, has been banned from the Paris Olympics over allegations that she whipped a horse. So she tried, like, got ahead of it in like a statement, um, but then the video dropped. Everyone was like appalled. They're very upset. They're like, look, it, there are situations where you can use a whip to instruct, to guide a horse. It should never be used on a horse like this. Like, it should not be used to inflict pain and punishment. 
Like, this is terrible. This is a terrible thing to do. Um, I, I've also heard plenty of people, it's like, you don't need a whip, period. Like, there's just no need to do it. You don't need to, like, crack a whip around to instruct a horse. You don't need that shit at all, you know? And I think me, I don't know if it's the Red Dead Redemption in me. I believe that. I don't think you need it. I don't think you need hard spurs. I, I shouldn't have quoted Red Dead Redemption. Maybe not, I don't know, maybe it's not the most ethical horse <laughs> situation. <laughs> anyway, no, like, I think that you can make the horse do what it needs to do otherwise you're a bad writer right i don't know like i i've never ridden i that's actually my dream my dream my dream is to ride a horse i was born in the year of the horse and i always felt like i um would have a good time but who knows i am also scared of a christopher reeve situation so there's that um but yes back to the story at hand this is very sad very unfortunate if you'd like to see the video and be sad apparently there's someone giggling in it it's not confirmed who it is in the video but um there was a whistleblower I, I, who they don't know who if it was a camera person who knows but um they they let this out and then um the cat was out of the bag or horse left the stable if you will um so yeah that's the olympics now but let's let's close out with the olympics future um this is from the independent if it loads up for me okay it is all right let me take my last break and we'll go ahead and close out let our own torch how about that do, 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 do. someone did that and i was like how am i supposed to know that that's some of the olympic sound like they did that like that's a paid podcaster did that that sound and i was like what they, they really will just let you do anything if you just get on SNL. That's fucking crazy. I mean, but hey, more power to it. Get the bag. That's still better than the Scars Guard. I'm going to save the planet. I hate that. I hate that shit. That makes me so mad. <laughs> I'm still upset about that. The Scars Guards. Okay, from the Independent. Salt Lake City wins 2034 Winter Olympics at the cost of a major FBI investigation. Okay, so this was very interesting to me. This is one of those things where, like, I think if I didn't know the sum of its parts, I wouldn't be interested in telling the story. But because I have been picking up these little crumbs, I was like, oh, this is worth my time because I know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the International Olympics Committee awarded 20, uh, 2034 Winter Olympics to Salt Lake City, Utah on Wednesday on the condition that state officials work to end an FBI investigation into doping. I'm also glad I read it this way because my rock had ass initially heard this as like, oh, it's getting shut down because Utah agreed to this. But it's like, no, 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 no. They the the I the IOC simply wants Utah to play ball on their side against their own country for the Olympics, and Utah said, "You know what? Bet that like they were so eager to do it." And I honestly I love it. I'm not even mad, but let's keep let's keep digging. The IOC required Utah lawmakers and U.S. Uh, Olympic leaders to sign an agreement promising to lobby the federal government to end an investigation into Chinese swimmers accused of doping, the Associated Press reports. Salt Lake City was, rewar- was awarded the 2034 20, uh, Games in an 83-6 vote. We will work with our members of Congress. We will use all the levers of power. Uh, to us to resolve these concerns utah's governor spencer cox told the anti or told the world anti-doping agency president and ioc voters ahead of their selection now i don't know man if i was like some crazy right-wing groper i would be like isn't this treasonous like isn't this like against the country like like this seems like they're like being foreign agents or something i thought we were against doping i thought we were like pro-integrity but y'all know me y'all know how i am i would never be like that i think this is just fucking funny because you had michael phelps and like there's another article i'm gonna pull this from i think katie ledecky i'm getting her name wrong i think another swimmer but they were like super mad uh because essentially um there was a a situation where uh 23 or so swimmers uh from china failed uh a doping uh test um and essentially wada just said 
uh, we know that you failed. We've obviously recorded it. We know. Uh, we're going to let you compete, though. And they went on to compete. And people, I think like 11 of them or so, they won medals. Um, but essentially, shit, I, I think we did cover, they actually referenced it here, the uh, Camilla Valieva story. Yeah, we did in the Beijing Olympics. You know, she went through a whole fucking kerfuffle. But essentially, China, though, China had the juice. And Wad is like okay, why don't you just, like, tell us a story? And essentially the story that got told, obviously I'm going to just riff it out, the little TDLR here. Essentially, they got detectives on the case in China, and they say, hey, the hotel where all these swimmers were at, that's how this this heart medication, it got put into their food somehow, either through the ventilation or through the food directly somehow. That's how they had low levels of this, this, this illegal drug that they weren't supposed to have in their system. And um, needless to say, some of those people, I believe, are even competing in the Olympics um, this year. So that's a fucking thing. Um, so needless to say, you know, uh, people are upset. You know, we go through all of, like, you know, our fucking standards to make sure that we are, you know, testing clean and, and performing clean and all that stuff. And it's against the integrity of the game. But, I mean, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Excuse me. We all know that the fucking IOC is a dirty ass fucking game in and of itself. They are competing for themselves to get as much money as they can. And they are easily plied with fucking money. So look, at the end of the day, they just want the U.S. to be fucking cool, man. And and right now, the U.S. is not cool for launching all this fucking doping allegations. So I think it's very funny that Utah... And they've had the Olympics before. They've literally, like, said, like, oh, my God, we love the Olympics so much. We can't wait to have it again, dude. We will fight so hard to get it again. Um, I guess, though, the next Olympics, though, what is it, 2028, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be in L.A. I When I – and correct me if I'm wrong, people who know, listeners out there, um, real gumshoes – I recall anyone who's told me about L.A. Olympics when it was, like, held before, it was kind of a nightmare. Like, it was cool that it happened. It's awesome. But at the same time, it's, like, so much fucking money. It's such a fucking investment. And they have, like, the classic problem that a lot of Olympics, uh, you know, hosts have of, like, this is such a money pit and we have to go bend over backwards to make sure that this works. Um, I mean, that's why you have, like, you know, once again, we've talked about Paris, you know, the one happening now, where, like, they spent billions of dollars just to make their dirty-ass fucking river hopefully swimmable. We'll see. Time's gonna tell. Knock on wood. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see, because now I know that this isn't, like, done data. Like, at the end of the day, they're just lobbying. And we'll see if the actual case gets dropped or not. And then what's the fate of uh, the U.S. if that happens? Because potentially there's a negative outcome there, which I know I'm skipping ahead. Actually, let me read a little bit. Why not? Why not actually do that? If I could get past these ads. Um, oop, 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 oop. Excusez-moi. Um, WADA is taking the U.S. Uh, anti-doping agency to the Independent Compliance Review Committee next month, uh, challenging America's role in the investigation. If the committee sides with WADA, the U.S. could be removed from competing in and hosting the Games, which jeopardizes the 2028 Los Angeles Summer Olympics and the uh, 2034 Salt Lake City Winter Olympics. So essentially they're saying, hey, sign this pact with us because if you don't, you don't get an Olympics, period. And they're like, dude, bet. (laughs) So once again, I love the moxie here. Um, I I personally want to see an Olympics. I don't care. I I don't care, dude. What about the integrity of the game? I say I don't care. I, this is for entertainment. It always has been. I'm I'm sorry, dude. Like outside of the time where I got to see Jesse Owens run and you get to see Hitler be so fucking butthurt, that is iconic fucking history. And I'm glad that that was real. There was no supplements involved in that other than Hitler doing a bunch of fucking drugs. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't care, dude. This is all space jam to me. (laughs) Sorry. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's where I'll close it out. Um, I'm sure I could have done that a little better, but it's getting hot in here and, um, I'm going to call it an episode. Oh, my God, 38. Oh, this is such a big episode. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I got to show a little bit, too. Uh, if you'd like to help out, support the effort, I do have a Patreon. Patreon.com plus Isaiah News. 
um, you know, become a newsy today, support the effort. Uh, I shout you out at the top of the month. Plug a project if you'd like. Uh, let's see. Uh, free ways to hit me up, isanews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to hit me up on any of the socials. And, um, yeah, hopefully you subscribe to the YouTube. I'm trying to get millions of subscribers. Yes, that's what I'd like to do. I would like to be one of those content creators. Um, but, hey, you know, I'll settle for a couple. I'll settle for a couple mo. Um, but yeah, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Hopefully it's a cool comment. Don't be mean. Don't be like one of those trolls. I didn't really talk about any of the trolls and I kind of wish I did. Um, but that's really like another fucking sad facet of this. Once again, with the Cody Ko thing, you have people doing the victim blaming thing, uh, from Monogau. I think that's really fucked up. I think, um, in the Tyson situation, you have people taking this to literally talking about how trans people are evil and the reason when this could be literally any fucking evil, disgusting person doing an evil, fucked up thing, you know? Like, it's just crazy that people go berserk in the comments or they go berserk on social media. So, uh, specific tomato town to Nick Merckx. Fuck yourself. Go fuck you. Boo. Um, yeah, so I'm going to close it out. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for being a friend. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.